so Alicia McPhail was taken from her bed and murdered on the Isle of Bute last summer. Today it was revealed that the 16-year-old who killed her was on the radar of police and social services. Alicia's family is now demanding to know why Aaron Campbell was allowed to slip through the net. Something could have been done, um, that there could have been further action taken to make sure that this never happened. Um, it, it does, it, it, hurt, it hurts quite a lot and on top of that, like, um, I don't want anything like this to happen to anyone else. Alicia Macphail was discovered dead in Woodland about three hours after being reported missing from her home in Rothsay, Isle of Bute, at 6.25pm on Monday, July 2, 2018. Alicia had been staying with her dad and grandparents when Aaron Campbell, who was intoxicated from a house party, swiped Alicia from her bed. Chilling CCTV footage shows Alicia Macphail's killer, Aaron Campbell returning home wearing just his underwear on the night the six-year-old was murdered. The clip shows the 16-year-old leaving and returning to his home several times. Campbell's mum discovered his movements when she checked the CCTV to see if Alicia had walked past on the morning she vanished. Once at the murder site, the twisted killer removed the girl's clothes and shook her violently as he covered her nose, mouth and neck with his hands. Little Alicia suffered 117 injuries on her little body and died from forceful pressure to her neck and face. She suffered catastrophic sexual injuries both before and after her death. DNA samples matching Aaron Campbell were found on 14 different parts of Alicia's body, including intimate areas and her neck, face and ankles. Her mutilated body was found in woods on the Isle of Bute, hours after her devastated family woke up to find she was missing. On March 21, 2019, Aaron Campbell was jailed for life with a minimum of 27 years behind bars. Can you say, can you say an ambulance to uh, Blake's Road? Blake's Road? Or yeah, it's, road? Uh, yeah, Road, Road. Road, yeah, what yeah, was the area? Off, off yeah. Southampton Way, SE15. SE15? Yeah, SE15, yeah, it's a boy bleeding today. Where is he bleeding from? He's, he's going, he's, he's in a wheelchair. Where is he bleeding from? We cannot tell. On the 27th of November 2000, 10-year-old Nigerian schoolboy Damilola Taylor was stabbed in London, in what became one of the United Kingdom's most high-profile killings. Two brothers, who were 12 and 13 at the time of the killing, were convicted of manslaughter in 2006. On 27 November 2000, Taylor set off from Peckham Library, South East London, at 4.51pm to walk home. He was captured on CCTV as he was making his way home. On approaching the North Peckham estate he received a gash to his left thigh, severing an artery. Staggering to a stairwell, he collapsed and bled to near death in approximately 30 minutes. He was still alive in an ambulance on his way to hospital but died shortly after. Damilola was just 10 days away from celebrating his 11th birthday. Several theories around what caused his fatal wound were presented by forensic scientists in court, with the Metropolitan Police accepting that he was attacked and fell onto a broken bottle. On August 9, 2006, teenage brothers and known gang members, Danny and Ricky Preddy were found guilty of killing Taylor and charged with his manslaughter. The brothers were sentenced to serve eight years in youth custody. However, Ricky and Danny were both given early release in 2010 and 2011, respectively. Eric Smith is an American murderer who tortured and murdered a four-year-old child, Derek Joseph Roby, in Steuben County, New York, on August 2, 1993. Eric Smith was riding his bike to summer camp in a local park, day camp. Four-year-old Derek Roby was walking alone to that same camp. Smith saw Derek and lured him into a nearby wooded area. There, Smith strangled him, dropped a large rock on his head, and raped him with a small stick. Smith then took Kool-Aid from Derek's lunchbox and poured it into Derek's open wounds. The cause of death was determined to be blunt trauma to the head with contributing asphyxia. At around 11 a.m., Derek's mother, Doreen, went to the park to pick up her son, only to find that Derek had never arrived. After four hours of investigation, his body was found. The murder case made national headlines, largely due to the age of the killer and of the victim. On August 8, 1993, Smith confessed to his mother that he killed Derek. The Smith family informed law enforcement later that night. Smith was subjected to extensive medical testing from specialists on both sides. 
they examined brain function, hormone levels, and found nothing to explain his violent behavior. According to court documents, Smith was a loner who was often tormented by bullies for his protruding low-set ears, thick glasses, red hair and freckles. Smith was convicted of second-degree murder in 1994 and sentenced to the maximum term then available for juvenile murderers, nine years to life in prison. Smith was granted parole in October 2021, after 27 years in prison. He was officially released in February 2022. Alyssa Bustamonte lived four houses down from nine-year-old Elizabeth Alton. She often came over to play with Alyssa and her siblings. On the night Elizabeth was killed, her mother, Patricia, says her daughter had begged to go to Alyssa's house to play. 5 p.m. was the last time Patricia saw her daughter alive. By 6 p.m., when Elizabeth didn't come home, her mum knew something was wrong. The day after Elizabeth's disappearance, FBI agents questioned Alyssa and seized her diary. Later in the investigation, authorities found a shallow grave covered with leaves behind Alyssa's house. Elizabeth's body was inside. Prosecutors charged Alyssa with first-degree murder and arrested her. Everyone was shocked. Though Alyssa had tried to cover up the diary entry by blotting out the blue ink in her diary, investigators were able to unveil the original writing underneath. I just killed someone. I strangled them and slit their throat and stabbed them now they're dead. I don't know how to feel at the moment. It was amazing. As soon as you get over the, oh my god I can't do this feeling, it's pretty enjoyable. I'm kinda nervous and shaky though right now. K, I gotta go to church now, laugh out loud. In court, Alyssa Bustamonte confessed to killing Elizabeth Alton. She said she strangled Elizabeth before cutting the girl's throat and stabbing her in the chest. In 2012 she was sentenced to life imprisonment with the possibility of conditional release, and a consecutive sentence of 30 years. Patricia, Elizabeth Alton's grieving mother, called Alyssa Bustamonte a monster and said that she hated everything about her. I remember being angry all day long and thinking all day long, I want to hurt somebody if, I, if, I, if, I, if I'm going to snap. And it wasn't initially, oh, I thought about the babysitter, I thought about going down the street and seeing somebody I knew, and I thought about hurting a stranger. I don't remember exactly what point I decided it's going to be Ella. I accidentally killed somebody. You think you killed somebody? No, I know I did. I feel so messed up. Is she breathing right now? No. Is she bleeding anywhere? Yes, yeah, she's bleeding all over the bed. Because I stabbed her. Paris Bennett is an American psychopath and murderer. He brutally killed his younger sister, Ella, four, when he was only 13 years old. He committed the heinous act by sexually abusing her and stabbing her 17 times. On the 5th of February 2007, at around 12.30 a.m., Charity Lee, the mother of Paris Bennett, received a call while at work, informing her that her younger child had been hurt. Charity had left Paris and Ella under the care of a babysitter. Paris had convinced the babysitter to leave, allowing him to harm his sister. Paris attacked Ella, who was in her bedroom, peacefully asleep. He choked her and sexually assaulted her before stabbing her 17 times. After all this, he spoke to a friend for six minutes before calling the police to report the incident. They arrived immediately and arrested the teenage boy. He alleged that he was suffering a hallucination and that he saw a demonic version of his younger sister, which had driven him to the fatal killing. However, the following day he admitted that he killed his younger sister to cause pain and misery to his mother. He confessed, that. For many years, there was just this hot, flaming ball of wrath in the pit of my stomach, and it was directed at my mother. And one of the reasons why I chose to kill my sister and not someone else is because I knew that by doing that, I could hurt my mother in the worst possible way. After all, as a child, I had always known that the most devastating thing to my mother would be the loss of one of her children, and I found a way to take away both her children in one fell swoop. Paris is still serving his 40 years jail term at the Ferguson Unit Texas State Prison. He was convicted in 2007, however, he will be eligible for parole in 2027. Paris Bennett's release date is scheduled for 5 February 2047.